All right, well, we're back for yet another session of the 8th grade art project here. Um, <clears throat> I'm starting to kind of uh, enjoy the way this is going here. Um, I was working on some uh, material over here in black last time. Uh, quick review. It's all about these things, uh, the elements of art, the principles of design. Uh, all ten of them have to be represented in this. It will be due before too long and also has to tell us something about yourself, about your initials, uh, the culture where your country, state, your parents are from, eight interests that are important, your birth date and zodiac, that'd be the establishment date, and then some level of uh, decoration. And uh, then we did a rough draft of that, kind of worked our ideas all out, and then after that, uh, worked them out for good on the actual piece of artwork. So it's come along. It seems like it's been a long time, but it really hasn't been. But it has been some uh, slow, tedious work at some points in time. And uh, so I'm going to get my pencil uh, ready there. And it looks like I'm going to just continue up here where I left off in this corner with my initials. And uh, I was alternating between black and orange at the time when I was making this, uh, representing Beaver Creek's colors. Uh, and uh, I'm going to mess with the uh, viewer's uh, sensibilities here a bit because this should be a bit of a three-dimensional looking letter. However, the way I'm going to color it in, this corner will look two-dimensional. But it will read as three-dimensional because of the tilt. So sometimes you take some liberties with your viewers to mess with their uh, visual perception. And when you can do that, then it makes them take a second look, that, that double take kind of uh, situation. Uh, and uh, as long as they, uh, it's not unattractive when you do it, then it will add to the communication ability of your piece of design work. Because they're kind of expecting it because of the three-dimensionality here. And then you don't give it to them, and uh, it messes with them. So that's a kind of an interesting way to uh, appeal to human nature sometimes, is to deny them something that they may be expecting, <laughs> visually that is. Okay, so I'm trying to keep my hands off my work by using a slip sheet here, but I'm noticing it's flashing a lot, so sometimes I have to hold it down just so it makes for a better video. You should really try to not touch the work. It's minimize that. It's kind of hard to make a piece of artwork without your hands being on it at some point in time. But it uh, is really a bad habit to to get in too frequently. Alright, yeah, here we go. I'm making a progress on this. Listening to some music in the background there. But I don't know that it's loud enough to make any sort of uh, an intrusion into your classic music, I think last time, classical, well this is classic music in itself, so, and, uh, so, as long as I keep coloring here, I think everything is going to be fantastic, so this is really starting to come together here, the whole idea of working from uh, the largest areas into the smallest areas has really, really paid off here, and just being patient and you know, not pushing the uh, project so fast that you end up with sloppy work. That's a really difficult thing to measure out when you first start making art, is how fast should I make these uh, projects? And the answer is, it's hard to say. You have to know what your own skills are and what your own production rate is. And uh, so it's uh, sometimes that a deadline is necessary to get people to really, really begin to uh, work on their project in such a manner that they uh, will produce it instead of just thinking about it forever. And that's a kind of part of the uh, appeal of planning as well. So this black K is going to have several kind of neat issues with it that are going to kind of affect the way people see it. We'll all know it's a K simply because of its shape and the way it reads. However, it's going to, uh, down here where it interacts with the lower portion of the B, I think you'll see in a moment here, I'm going to take it 
take some liberties with the way my viewers see things. And if you're doing this kind of thing intentionally, well, then that's one thing. If it just happens by accident, well, that's another thing. But sometimes accidents, you know, create uh, effects that you would not expect. So if you can anticipate kind of where that's going, I think you'll see what I'm about to say here once I get my pencil sharpened up again. There we go. Nice working point so it won't snap off. There's still a lot to be done here. So let's get back over here into this corner. And uh, the orange and the black really, really play off each other really well. And since I have lived most of my life in Beaver Creek, that's kind of why I'm working on that color combination there. Now, I'm not a big uh, Bengals fan, and that's their colors too, but uh, and I don't necessarily dislike them, but they do have good colors, I'll tell them, I'll say that. And this is uh, a good color combination, although sometimes it really makes me think of uh, Halloween a lot, fall, harvest time of the year. Days are getting shorter, as represented by the black, and harvest is coming in like pumpkins and squashes kind of represented by the orange and you know your jack-o'-lanterns and stuff that's all part of it okay that is some rich color and it really really soaks up that orange right next to it in that scrap so black has a, a tendency because it absorbs light so much to cause the colors that it's next to to appear slightly darker. And uh, that's not necessarily the, that's how our vision works. It's not necessarily because it's literally happening. It's soaking up uh, the colors around it is what's happening. And so it's making a difference in the way we perceive it. So color vision happens in your eyes and your brain. Really, uh, at first, I've, it seemed like this project would take a million years, and I think that's any good project that's worth doing probably starts that way. You have a really great idea, and then, you know, when it comes time to actually implement that idea, that's where it starts getting difficult. The exact where you have to ask yourself, well, how am I going to do that? How is if I make this decision, and then that happens? What about this? That's uh. And that's part of, I guess, uh, part of learning how these things are done. Is a lot of it is trial and error. A lot of it is experiential learning, where you know, experiment with something and it doesn't it doesn't completely work out. Not everything you try that seems like a crazy idea doesn't have some value if you learn something meaningful from it. Uh, or you discover something that you may not have expected when you're off on these crazy ideas. So, you know, there, there is value in um, sometimes, you know, taking the bait of being impulsive, especially with an art project. But, yeah, boy, when you, you had something pretty good going and you mess it up, that really is painful. So, serious artists will do a series of studies before they literally commit to the uh, final, final idea, the final project. Uh, that's what a sketchbook is about in a lot of cases, is being able to work out your, your ideas uh, before they become a problem on the uh, material that you're working on. So uh, a lot of artwork takes a long time to do, and so you plan each step along the way, uh, just like, you know, kind of like you would climb a mountain, I suppose. You wouldn't just start climbing a mountain without any planning. That would be kind of dangerous, I would think. So you do a little bit of planning, and then each day you set your goals for the next day based on what you know happened during the previous day's work. And uh, that can really be, uh, you know, that's how you end up at the top of the mountain, I suppose, by the end of it all. And along the way, you may have issues. 
but that's the experience that you sign up for when you start a piece of artwork. Now see, I have broken down that corner there, but it makes an interesting shape. And that's going to mess with my viewer's eyes, and that's okay, because they're going to want to, they're going to wonder, well, hey, what about that? How come it doesn't look three-dimensional in the same way the other one does? And I'm going to have to let them figure that out on their own. Same is going to happen down here where the black uh, portion of the B, that three-dimensional portion of the B comes together with the one, the flat surface of the front of the K. But it will continue and pick up down here below the lower bout of the K. And so that particular setup there is going to kind of mess with my viewer's eyes a bit too. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Because this corner, see here, the bottom of the K appears to be three-dimensional, and then it will, then the re-emergence of the three-dimensionality of the letter B will appear. So it's put in there simply to mess with your viewer a little bit. See, that's the bottom of the letter K and this is a three-dimensional portion of the letter B and where they come together and overlap there's a complete blending of the exact same value but you don't lose any communicative value because people know precisely what they are looking at and that's kind of how you mess with them a little bit because it only looks semi three-dimensional in there doesn't it alright so and I've left out this whole portion of the three-dimensional portion of the letter M and so uh, you just do these things uh, you still get your point across but it makes for some much more interesting viewing when you uh, do it that way I think I've snapped off the end of my letter uh, my pencil here so now I'm going to do a similar thing down here where this corner turns it's just going to be colored in black and uh, this portion right here is black, but where that corner turns, it's going to feed into this black uh, stripe that uh, feeds along through there. So I'm going to start with this one right here. I've got a loose pencil tip, so I'm going to be careful. So my initials here kind of go back and forth between uh, legit three-dimensionality <coughs> and just flat letters. And uh, I think that's kind of an intriguing way to make people look at them more than once. They want to they assume, people look at things and they want to assume that they see it at the very first look. The mature viewers of art look at it for long periods of time before they decide what they think about it. That's what uh, you're really trying to achieve with your artwork, is having people look at it for long periods of time. Okay, if I press straight down on this pencil, even though it's got a somewhat broken point, I think I can save it there and get some mileage out of it. Now again, here's where you see that three-dimensionality comes together with the flat surface and kind of breaks it down a little bit, but it's hard to not know that it's supposed to be three-dimensional because of the way the letters are handled. So I'm kind of trying to get that effect of it's cut out of construction paper and pasted on at the same time meeting that three-dimensional illusion, kind of fusing those two ideas together. This is a good art project. It is a, a little more demanding than uh, some of the other projects. Uh, trying to get your ideas all worked out and attempting to uh, get those ideas complex enough to communicate something about yourself but sim simple enough that it can get done and the amount of time that you have to get the project finished. I mean, it's always the difficult thing is meeting the deadline versus uh, doing the piece of artwork that you wish you could do if you never had a time on it. And uh, I experienced that myself. And uh, I think anybody who's ever made a piece of 
artwork that they really liked and then had to rush through the end of it in order to make the deadline is probably could relate to that idea. Hey, this is coming together real nice. And the way this black shows up against the that sky blue behind it is also quite attractive. I'm kind of looking for my little parts of There we go now. See, I'm going to break down that corner again by not changing its color. Keep it that way on purpose just to add an interesting kind of a visual twist to the perception of it. Although people will perceive it oh, as three-dimensional, it won't be visually explained to them that way. mistake I made right there can be uh, scratched off. Hoping. Let's give it, a, give it a try. I hope it's not on a point I won't stain my paper there. It kind of got a little crazy with the color. I think it's going to be all right. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to live with it. Now I'm going to continue with this black up here on another portion of my three dimensional lettering. So I keep alternating back and forth between that three-dimensional effect and that two-dimensional effect. I'm uh, doing that intentionally because I think that messing with a person's perception is a, is a neat trick. kind of goes back to uh, M.C. Escher. And M.C. Escher is an artist that we'll discuss and uh, check out some of the work of during our drawing unit. He's kind of the uh, patron saint of people who really, really like to draw. So, okay, so I've got my 3D thing going on there this time, but when I put it up against that black strip that's going to go weave its way through here, then it's going to, uh, it's going to look kind of interesting. So let's see if we can trim that little chunk out of there, because I want this all to be very distinct against each other. All right, now this black stripe goes and weaves its way between all these other areas of the drawing. I may even put some of these little markings <coughs> that are floating in the uh, water of the swamp. I may make those black as well. Now see, once again, this is that perceptual thing when the two colors come together and the three-dimensional edge disappears. And so that's kind of leading them visually from one thing into the next thing. So even though it's just a very small area where that interaction occurs, people will read it as three-dimensional, but they won't literally see it that way, because this will visually cue them, this right there. But I want that hard edge right there. Okay, I'll just keep on going. This is like the, the black water that flows through the swamps and the rivers down in the southern United States. And the delta, dark water, silted up. <laughs> now this would be a time when if you're going to have the overlapping stripe marks when you're coloring, this would be the time to overlap them in order to kind of give it that flowing along the water effect there. And you would be able to see it on close inspection. You might not be able to see it on the projection screen. But if you were personally looking at it visually, you would see those little overlapping stroke marks. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to continue to hold this down. It's really getting shiny and the camera light is really reflecting off the shiny surface of the, the art project here. Because I'm putting down the colored pencil pretty heavy. I'm trying to get that tight control where the two colors when they meet, that line that separates them just disappears. 
that's really a good way to make um, put colors to work for you is to change the values where it's really obvious where one thing ends and the next thing begins. So that's a, uh, a really good technique and it's used by artists all over the world in all cultures. Okay, that's uh, looking pretty good. It's reading beautifully on the projection screen. So I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing here. The nice part of making the artwork is watching it develop. And that's really one of the more interesting parts of it, to be honest. Okay, this is starting to kind of neat, have its own appearance there. And as we go along and just continue to produce patiently, focus, focus when you're making artwork. Okay. I may have to resharpen my black colored pencil here momentarily, but I've been really careful because I had a broken point and I didn't want it to fall out. I could feel it wobbling around, but I didn't want it to fall out. So I've been very carefully <coughs> using it <coughs> so that it doesn't snap off and get worse. So I'm really fussy that way about the use of the materials I have. And uh, it's uh, not <coughs> just a bad habit. It's uh, if you have to buy your own art materials, you would probably get pretty fussy about them too. Paint can be extremely expensive. Paint brushes are extremely expensive. Good paint brushes. Good paint is extremely expensive. Good colored pencils are very expensive. Okay, so I really like the way that black touches up against that circle for one of my important interests. Let's see what we got here. Well, that's starting to look really very good. And so, I'm going to continue that black stripe, and it comes out of this circle here for education and continues its way up there along towards the, uh, the flag of the country of France, which I just found I checked that out, and it's blue, white, and red, so I'm going to have red on red, so I'm going to have to change that color of red so it shows up against a different color of red. And so, these things, yeah, they happen even with planning. You still run into problems, and especially when you change your mind on a whim, and then you don't stick to the plan, you open up a can of worms that you need to and you're totally adjusting to, but I'm sticking with the decision I made since I think it was a good decision to begin with. Alright. So you just gotta be persistent. That's how these things are done. And, uh, you know, people that are really into art I wouldn't even have to tell them to pick up the pencil and get working. They just know what they want to do, and they get a project that says something meaningful about them, and they get on with it. Uh, other people, you know, not quite so motivated to do the work. So it's a uh, it's not as easy a class as I believe people think it is, because uh, you know, you've got to show that you want to make artwork and learn about artwork. If you're going to be in an art class, I think that's important. Okay, so, I'm trying to get the opacity taken care of here as I go along, so I don't have to continuously come back and deal with it. Okay, now let's get some more of this down here. And I still haven't sharpened that black colored pencil in a while. Still getting some, getting a little bit of mileage out of it there. Black 
colored pencil. I usually don't use much of the black colored pencil. I try to, in the physical classroom, we save it for the uh, sixth grade uh, design project and for their uh, drawings. They do drawings of cars and they need it to color in the uh, tires of their cars. And it becomes very short in supply. But since this is uh, either a makeup lesson or an E lesson, depending on what uh, you are viewing this video for, then, um, you know, if you've got your own black color pencil, if you're not actually in the physical classroom, you know, use the color that you think is the appropriate color there, as long as you get good values and things are clearly visible where one thing ends and the next thing begins. So, that's really you know, the point of the uh, instruction on uh, the elements of art and the principles of design uh, and doing a design project is to uh, apply those concepts and principles and, and see how they actually work uh, when you try to uh, communicate something through these uh, ten elements of art and principles of design that were on the worksheet that I reference frequently when we start a session. Okay, <coughs> I'm uh, really very uh, I'm satisfied with this uh, strange biomorphic uh, snake-shaped stripe that weaves its way through the upper portion of my interest in the swamps on my father's side of the family. The uh, music sounds suspicious back there. It's scary. Huh. Alright, this is uh, starting to work, work its way out there. I'm really excited about this. Although you may not be able to tell by my calm demeanor as I talk. Try to talk calmly. All right. I think I'm going to use every scrap of this broken colored, black colored pencil end uh, that I can possibly get at there. Really kind of had to help it along there by rolling it around carefully so that it didn't get stressed too much, but I think it came out okay for a broken lead. So I want to sharpen it again. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Sounds like something adventurous happening back there in the background. Music going. Okay. Well, it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to try to resharpen the black colored pencil and with any luck we will. Uh, it looks. Oh no! Curses! It broke off. All right. I know how you all feel now when that happens to you. Okay. So I'm going to have to use a little bit more stable point, I suppose. Oh, my eyes are getting blurry. Getting blurry. Okay, I want to finish this out here and maybe move on to just maybe the last little piece of this in one session. I think we're closing in on having this done in a couple more sessions. If you're uh, doing the project pretty much the way I'm doing it, then yeah, you've got to be getting pretty close to finishing the very large areas. I'll tell you what, if you don't have some details in it, it's going to bore you senseless when you start filling in these very, very large areas. So the details are kind of, I guess, important also to keep your interest in the project. It's, uh, man, if you're just like, if it's like you're painting a house or a garage or something, those huge open areas of a piece of paper that you're coloring in with something small like a colored pencil, boy, that can really wear you down. It's hard work. So I like to put enough details into a piece of work to keep my mind occupied. 
but not so many that it is, you know, just it's it's exhausting sometimes if you have too many fine details, especially depending on your age. Some people, you know, older individuals seem to have more patience than uh, younger people do. Yeah, same goes for young students. So uh, some students, you know, the younger students uh, have pretty good attention spans, but it's very difficult for, you know, young and less mature students to focus for long periods of time. However, it's not unreasonable to expect that from an 8th grader. Uh, especially an 8th grader that likes art, or if they signed up for art, then, you know, you would think that they have an intention to make it, which causes them to have to make art projects, and when you make an art project, it's going to take some time, so it's not just, a, you know, scribbling in a, in a book and, you know, drawing what's in your head. It's, it's taking those ideas from your head and actually communicating them through the use of a uh, time-honored methods and techniques that have been passed down through the ages and are being passed on to you right now if you are wise enough to take advantage of them. Okay, Let's trim that little corner, that edge of that circle. Come on. Got to coach it along there because it comes down here a little bit. There we go. Okay. I wonder how that's all looking there. It's looking pretty good, if you ask me. Yeah. Huh. Well, let's look at it in overall mess. So, since I'm using black right now, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this music note, because it's black. So, I'm going to take care of that right away, since I'm standing right here looking at it. And I have a, a mind to make this stripe that goes into the state of Ohio black also. has a powerful effect against some of the other colors I've selected. Dot right there indicating <coughs> an addition of a fraction of a note of time. For those of you that are musically inclined will know what it means. If not, it's just something that looks cool. So you have to be really careful when you're uh, coloring uh, other colors next to the color black. It's usually a good idea to color the other colors first. I feel pretty confident in my skills, so I don't think I'm going to be smearing it all together. But uh, I would probably recommend that, given the option to color a brighter color first, that's probably a good idea, honestly. <laughs> uh, but I, I feel pretty confident, although that's just about the time something terrible happens. So, I mean, now i got to really focus because I may have cursed myself. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Yeah. And here we go. We're just going to want to get that corner in there, and I've been turning my pencil in my hand as I color it, and uh, because of that I'm able to keep a sharp little point on it so that when I do have these really fine details and little corners, I've got that sharp little corner on it there. And you have to kind of find it sometimes, but it's in there. But if you don't roll the pencil around in your fingers, then you end up just making it really dull on one end and you can't really get any control in it. So that's you know, one of these things that's a, an eye-hand coordination aspect of what we do in visual art. It's not always about, you know, the completely always about making the artwork. It's about developing some skills and coordination between your mind and your eyes and your hands so that when you do have a desire to communicate something in a media such as drawing or painting or sculpture or music that you have the coordination, the eye-hand coordination and the planning skills to do it. So these are all just tools like you would have in a toolbox. 
of education. That's really all it really is. Okay, so I have to ask myself, what color is this stripe going to be? And I'm going to go black because it seems to be the color for the moment, and I don't see why not. Yeah, the colors have been. And I found out when I did the red stripe all the way around the outside edge there, it could take a while. So uh, it turns out stripes can take a long time to color in. Who would have thought that? But I do like this idea of using this black line right here, a black stripe, to kind of move the viewer's eyes along from the hills of Tennessee and from uh, up here in the Louisiana swamp lands uh, through the education and military. Those are kind of how I ended up. And I didn't plan for that to be that way, so I think what I was saying in the last session is that it's kind of subconscious, I suppose. Sometimes things you're not necessarily planning show up in your work strangely. And, uh, especially when you're doing work that makes you reflect on your own self, I guess. That's when these types of things are probably most likely to happen. It sounds like the music is done, and it sounds like the bell is rung. And uh, I think when I finish this stripe, uh, that's going to be plenty for a session there. So we uh, sometimes the entire session is just doing one color. Sometimes others, it's uh, switching colors frequently, I guess. But in this case, this is uh, today's colors was just. Pretty much black in most of this session. <coughs> All right, let me trim these out. I may have to get me a sharper pencil. Yeah. Well, I hope that you're keeping up with my instruction. If you are, you must be making pretty de decent progress. Uh, I can uh, create these things a little faster than most people based on my experience. But uh, I know that a lot of times it's uh, it's more difficult than it looks when it's being put on a video. But I am making the projects in real time uh, at the exact same pace as you see them. So these are uh, this is how long it would take me to make a piece of artwork, and the exact same thing that I'm expecting you to do, I'm literally right in front of you doing as well. And so. Uh, if I were to have to do the project,